Shalom fam, what's up? Ev here. And hey look, this is a, it's not really a diss. It is what it is, it's the truth. And um, it's concerning um, the Hebrew doctrine, the One West Camp doctrine. First, let me give all praises to the Most High. Um, Cause I was locked in that Christianity a lot of years, right? And probably like most of us that's woke right now, um, we got pulled in by the camps, the Hebrew camps, because these brothers, um, whatever you might think of them right now, they did a job in pulling us in, opening up some of our eyes to the scriptures, right? And I appreciate that. I'm going to give them the credit to get the most high the credit. But in any event, those brothers was useful in pulling me in the fold. So, but I don't have any loyalty to those brothers. I got loyalty to the Most High, so I'm here with the Most High in mind. Had nothing to do with those brothers. It's as simple as this. Uh, when you first wake up and when you start to get the inkling of something's wrong with that scripture, something wrong with that Bible, the enemy already know this too, so he got a contingency plan. Now, when you run out of that Christianity, you're looking at these Hebrew brothers like myself. They were telling the truth, sharp tongue. You see them out there in their videos cutting people up. I had never seen anything like that before. Had never heard some of those Bible scriptures that they were saying before. So naturally, you're like, yeah, you, you start to give in to authority. If you see somebody on a basketball court that's nice, all of a sudden you're like, yeah, that motherfucker is, he is what it is. So you start to revere and start to give them authority because what they say sounds good. So, and I followed the brothers for a while, watch them do their thing, and they were pretty accurate. Now, one of the first first areas of contingency that I have with the brothers is I smoke marijuana for a couple of reasons. One, I like smoking it. Two, I'm a grown man. And um, three, I have a marijuana card for nausea. So um, some of the Israelite brothers used to come through and always talk about getting high, getting high. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Now, what these brothers did instill in me, which I want to salute them for, thank you, is the finding in the scriptures, right? That was the first the first piece of the foundation that they set that was the beginning of the end for them with me because I like to study. That's what I do. I research all the time. I'm home all the time. So I have time to research, to become the source, not actually need another person. However, multiple people have different ideas. I'm a person too, no matter what era, and I can deduct the reason. So I get all the variables and I can come to a conclusion, right? The scriptures work that way as well. So... I studied, and I was looking for certain words. I found out what the name of marijuana was in the Hebrew, and I start looking around, and nothing in that book said, nothing in there said not to, not to inhale, digest anything. Leviticus 11 and 11. So that's what I went with, period. No matter what anybody else said, how these guys try to flip a script, say this, that, and the third, it wasn't in there, and that's what it was. And still to this day, I haven't found it in there. Now with that, when I found that out, I started thinking like, well, they are men. I mean, why do I have to be the one to be wrong? They could be wrong, right? So I started studying even more. Then um, it was this verse that they would always say, 1 Corinthians 11, 3 and 4 is talking about God being a Head of man, man being the head of woman, Christ being the head. Well, God being the head of Christ, Christ head of me, I'm the head of the woman. And any man praying and prophesying with his head covered, dishonor for his head. See, what I understand now, the new the New Testament is is a figment of Christian missionaries' imagination, and that's a video that I did just before this one. But to get to get to praying and prophesying with your head covered. Let me um go to Torah, not the New Testament. Torah is the instructions where we get the rules from, thus saith the Lord. So I'm going to go in the Torah and see what it says about, it's in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 44, uh, maybe 18. And this is the instruction of God concerning like praying and prophesying. And actually, when you win the holiest part of, of what does it say, Ezekiel... 44 when you're in the holiest part of of the tabernacle the, they call it one second they, they not call it the tabernacle but 44 and 18 there we go 
And when they enter the gates of the inner court, they shall wear linen vestments. They shall have nothing woolen upon them when they minister inside the gates of the inner court. That's Ezekiel 44 and 17. Ezekiel 44 and 18 says this. They shall have linen turbans on their heads and linen breeches on their loins. They shall not gird themselves with anything that cause sweat. So me and my understanding here with these couple of uh, verses in Ezekiel, three things is happening. One, have something on your head while you're praying and prophesying and in the holiest place, right? Not don't cover it. Um, two, when people try to talk about that woolen and cotton law, you can't keep all the laws from mixing fabric. It wasn't for everyday people. It's for the priest. This is for the priesthood, right? Levitical priesthood. And then three, I hear say have linen breeches on. And this is in Paleo Hebrew translated. This is the this is a Tanakh. So it's transliterated. Uh she has the Hebrew, what it says in Hebrew, and how to read it, what it reads in, in the English. So I'm seeing linen breeches on here. Now the reason that breeches stick out to me is because what is it? Uh Deuteronomy 22 and 5. One of the passages that these camps like to use, Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Let me see. I believe that's what it is. Um, let me read that real fast. A woman must not put on a man's apparel, nor shall a man wear a woman's clothing, for whosoever, whoever does these things is an abhorrent to the Lord your God. Now, the Hebrew camps say that women shouldn't wear pants, but we just mention breeches they call them breeches they don't call them pants so they wasn't talking about pants and i know for a fact right i don't know because i'm guessing like the camps and passing down information i actually research and if it's not talking about you or your own particular people this is how research is done if i can't find out anything about my state maryland that i live in i should start looking at virginia because that's in proximity you know what I'm saying? Or Pennsylvania to see what their cuisine was like, the weather climate. You do this with the scriptures too. So I start looking at the Egyptians and you know what they were doing? The women were dressing up like men in armor to honor Mars, the God of war. And the men were dressing up like Venus in dresses and shit to honor the goddess of love. And we were in Egypt. You know, we lived there. You know, most of our laws come from living in Egypt. And here goes something else that most Israelite camp leaders or whatever they are don't know. The scripture wasn't written with chapters and numbers in it. So when y'all breaking numbers up, you breaking up a thought thinking it's new. It runs right into the next thought, right? That's how you read the Tanakh. See, anything that's not the Tanakh, even though it's the King James Version, it's still Christian, missionary, early church literature. So it's a lot of stuff in there that they put in there that they manipulated to be a certain way. And the law of God, the authority of God, comes in his law. I mean, I said that's another video. So I can't say it means anything. Thus say if the Lord is what it has to mean. And um, everything that's going to help you out that connects to the scriptures won't be written in the scriptures. You need to know that. Even though we say speak as the oracles of God, you got to have some common sense with God too, right? Such as... Being in order, order, don't play in the street, don't play in traffic. That's not in the scriptures, right? But wouldn't that go in line with supporting the scriptures? So it's, it's tenets of the scriptures and things that's not written in the scriptures. I'm quite sure y'all know what I mean. So they'll try to tell you if you can't read it verbatim or you don't see it, that that's not what it means. And they the master that curve and shit, like don't smoke marijuana. It's not in there verbatim. Don't wear pants. It's not in there verbatim. And then they talk about how much Hebrew they speak or translate. Translating the word is not the same thing as transliteration. You have to know what was being said, the context and everything. This is a perfect um, a perfect time for me to show y'all that. Jeremiah 14 and 2. This is one of the, the first things I heard when I came in to this truth, right? And it was like, damn, we was black because... I'm like everybody else. I didn't know that we were the people. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that was us. I'm, I'm just a Christian like everybody else. And I hear these brothers saying, Judith mourning. 
You know what I'm saying? They are black into the ground. Black to the ground mean different shades, you know, it's different colors. I was like, damn, that's cool. Then I start reading on my own, right? And then I found out that Jeremiah was the weeping prophet. So he was talking about Judah, where we were. And this is what it reads in the, um, the Tanakh, right? Tell me if you're translating what they're saying. This is the Jewish Bible, the Tanakh, how it was written in the original. The word of the Lord, it's Jeremiah, excuse me, Jeremiah 14, 14 and 1. And I'm going to read down to two. The word of the Lord, which came to Jeremiah concerning the droughts, the droughts. This is in, this is in Jerusalem. All right. This is the verse that they always read. This is in the Tanakh. This is how it reads, supposed to read. Judah is in mourning. Her settlements languish. Men are bowed to the ground and the outcry of Jerusalem rises. They are black into the ground. They look into the ground in despair. It's not their color black. And when you have stuff like this, there's no way around it. Because now that you hear the verses, now you're going to take it personal. That ain't even about the truth anymore. It's about who the hell he think he is. I don't think I'm nobody. I'm just reading the scriptures of God, like right here. While y'all run around playing, debating, and thinking that, that y'all are it. Y'all actually the synagogue of Satan. Those that claim to be Jews but are not, you're not practicing what the scriptures say. You're practicing membership. Y'all trying to see who can get the bigger, biggest membership. And um, I want to read something else to y'all too, like concerning my hair, what my hair looks like. Remember when I was telling you that it was it was no chapters, no numbers? You had Christian missionaries that put that shit in. I don't know whether they was trying to make it easier or what. But I'm going to read um, Leviticus 19, 19 and what is it, 27, about shaving your hair, your beard. And everything is in context. Like I said, you know what your people are doing by what your neighbors are doing and where we came from. So... This is Leviticus 19, and what's y'all favorite verse? 27, 28, when you're talking about shaving and all that. Because they used to come at me. You're still coming in my scopes and talk about hair and beards. I know these are young Hebrews or niggas that just got in it with all that zeal and don't know anything. But this is what it says pertaining to your hair and your beard. Now, listen. There's no vowel points. There was no vowel points. There's, there's no numbers. And there's no chapters. So this is what it says. This is what y'all would say Leviticus 19 and 27 says. This is in the Tanakh. You shall not round off the side growth on your head or destroy the side growth of your beard. You shall not make gashes in your flesh for the dead or incise any marks on yourselves. I am the Lord. All of that is about the dead. It's not about a dress code. We were in Egypt. That's what they did in Egypt. When somebody died, they marked themselves or slashed themselves. They cut their hair. That was their tradition. God told us to be set apart and holy, so you don't do that. We came out of Egypt. It ain't some kind of dress code. And they shoot themselves in the foot with saying, oh yeah, we ran in Egypt to hit, hide out, right? Yeshua, Yahweh Shai told us to run in Egypt and hide. Moses blended in in Egypt, but the Egyptians didn't have beards. That's why we, we grew beards, so we could have manly beards and the Egyptians don't have. Which way is it? You know, if you let them talk enough, they'll shoot themselves in the foot. And it was sad, too, man, because some of them guys, I used to look up to them. Like, I don't want to say none of their names, but they on side of the TV, um... I was like, damn, they pseudo. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if they know they pseudo or not, but like just sitting back and studying, that's why you can't be in a camp or a situation like that because I couldn't have been this person to learn that under them. They going to feel threatened. And I done figured out that the whole story about Christ is off just by studying. They changed it. Like found a, I found the actual scriptures where God said one thing in the New Testament, they changed the whole thing. Not... I didn't find us out in the camp, you know? 
I found this out pursuing God, not pursuing knowing the most, not pursuing one of these groups. It's just the truth. And every time you stand in that, you're going to be able to repel and reflect everything that's coming your way. So I'm waiting for the Hebrews, the lie, like the be in their feelings instead of accepting what God say, to just have some kind of kickback. Y'all got to get out of that shit, man. The enemy knew this in the beginning. He knew his time was coming with this church shit. Like, we want it. We, we waking up. It's an awakening for sure. But at the same time, the enemy not just going to let us be woke up. So these camps, he knew it was going to be the first stop. Make a trend out of being an Israelite. Kendrick Lamar, Israelite, right? All these niggas Israelites, they know now. So now it's a trend. Now, black identity extremists. You know, now it's some more stuff for us to have to get out. And then we got these brothers at the camp teaching the false doctrine. To help us, to help us not wake up even more. Just for pride. Y'all got the 5013C, just like the church. Y'all just like a, a Christian super church. Y'all don't ask for the door of the church to be open. You do it another way. But y'all got to get that doctrine right, man. People come right to y'all. Y'all important. And what you do to them, the same shit that the white man doing to them. You lying to your own people based on pride. And if any of you, any of you, still following Jesus the Christ, you need to lock down a little more, right? Pray to the Most High for some guidance. Because that Jesus thing, that's what's keeping us right here. If you had to give up Jesus or God, which one would it be? Because that's what you're facing. That's exactly what we're facing. So this ain't no real beef or whatever with the Israelites, the Hebrew camps. It's just a truth session. You, you brothers need to stop being members, right? You understand how y'all want white people to start doing what's right? You don't know why they won't just do what's right. You don't know why when we can look at a video and see the police shooting somebody 57 times and that cop don't get off. Remember that spirit when you in your pride because you're hearing something that you can't refute. You know, all those scriptures are what I said they are. And just because they don't agree with you, you can't change them. You understand? So y'all need to be, you need to be on the up and up with the most high. We look like folly right now. Back and forth, false doctrine. Every time you turn around this camp, that camp, what the f? Get yourselves together, campers. Y'all could be real useful, you know, or you could be real 